Hello, and welcome to the Pittsburgh City Council's Standing Committee's meeting for Wednesday, May 22nd. My name is Louise Chris, and with us today is David Tatro, our sign language interpreter. City Council will discuss the following legislation for preliminary vote. Pre-agenda, Bill 1643. Resolution appointing Lori Beth Jones as a commissioner of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City of Pittsburgh. Bill 1646. Resolution appointing Amoye Akule as a commissioner of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City of Pittsburgh. Finance and Law Committee, Reverend Burgess Chair. Bill 1338, Ordinance Amending, Supplementing, and Correcting the Pittsburgh Code at Title II, Fiscal, Article I, Administrative, Chapter 219, Operating Budget, as to add contract and bid information requirements to fiscal impact statements and to further correct numbering and formatting. Sponsored by Mrs. Kale Smith, Ms. Strausberger, Ms. Gross, Mrs. Harris. Bill 1662. Resolution further amending resolution 73, effective February 29, 2012, by transferring 160,000 from Neighborhood Learning Alliance public safety cameras to D2 Deck Hockey. Total for, of all projects not to exceed $14,964.53. Sponsored by Mrs. Kale Smith. Bill 1663. Resolution further amending and supplementing Resolution 855 of 2011 by transferring $1,000 $600 from Neighborhood Learning Alliance Public Safety Cameras to D2 Deck Hockey and Council District 2 Neighborhood Needs Program. Sponsored by Mrs. Kale Smith. Bill 1669. Resolution establishing the City of Pittsburgh Equity and Inclusion Implementation Team. Sponsored by Reverend Burgess and Mr. Lavelle. Bill 1670. Ordinance Supplementing the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances, Title I, Administrative, Article Three, Organizations, Chapter 111, Departments Generally, by adding a new subsection, 111.03, Equity Standards and Requirements for All Departments and Units of City Government. Sponsored by Reverend Burgess and Mr. Lavelle. Bill 1671, resolution declaring the city of Pittsburgh as an all-in city, sponsored by Reverend Burgess and Mr. Lavelle. Public Works Committee, Mrs. Kale Smith, Chair. Bill 1655, resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a donation agreement with the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy to accept a donation for materials to repair and improve the nine-mile run trail in Frick Park and further authorizing the Director of Department of Public Works to enter to an agreement with the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy accepting the donations for this purpose. Bill 1656. Resolution authorizing the Mayor and the Director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement or agreements or the use of existing agreements between the City of Pittsburgh and Pashek plus MTR for the professional landscape architectural services for Arsenal Park Phrase 1 design at a cost not to exceed $394,174. Bill 1661. Resolution authorizing the Mayor and Director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure on behalf of the City of Pittsburgh, to enter to an agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, PennDOT, to receive certain grant monies for the Safe Routes to School project through the Transportation Set-Aside Program, and further authorizing 
an agreement or agreements to expand these grant monies towards completion of the Safe Routes to Schools project. Human Resources Committee, Mrs. Harris Chair. 1657, resolution providing for the filing of applications by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Human Services for grants in connection with the Joint Job Initiative Program Employment Advancement and Retention Network, EARN, and providing for the authorization to enter into agreements with various agencies and to pay for expenditures at a, for costs to support, implement, and administer the program, costs not to exceed $4,585,786. Land Use and Economic Development Committee, Mrs. Gross Chair. Bill 1668, Ordinance Supplementing the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances, Title IX, Zoning, Chapter 922, Development Review Procedures, Sections 922.10.E.2, 922.11.B.3, and 922.11.C.2 with a new subsection, Affordable Housing Impact Statements, sponsored by Reverend Burgess and Mr. Lavelle. Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, Mr. O'Connor, Chair. Bill 1621. Resolution authorizing the Mayor, the Office of Management and Budget, and the Department of Public Works to enter into a professional services agreement with Oxford Development Company to serve as the property manager for 412 Boulevard of the Allies. Bill 1658. Resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's official sewage facility plan for Delfer Investments for 700 Armandale Street in the 25th Ward. Bill 1659. Resolution adopting a plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh's <clears throat> official sewage facility plan for connection at Southside 2984 Sydney Street in the 16th Ward. This concludes the reading for Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this pre-agenda item for Pittsburgh City Council. Uh, uh, today's date is Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. I am Councilman Krause, and I'll be chairing this morning's uh, uh, pre-agenda item. Uh, this morning, we are interviewing new appointees uh, to be commissioners on our Clean Pittsburgh Commission. And so, Madam Clerk, without further ado, may I have the purpose of 1643 and 1646. Bill 1643, resolution appointing Lori Beth Jones as a commissioner of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Bill 1646, resolution appointing Amaye Aquali as a commissioner of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission of the City for a term to expire April 30th, 2023. Okay, great. Thank you very much, Madam Clerk. So good morning. I'm not sure how familiar uh, you might be with this process, but uh, we, we tend to keep it casual, make it more conversational. Uh, we'd like to learn a little bit about you, what your thought processes are, what you uh, bring to the Clean Pittsburgh Commission, and then we'll open it up for a, a little bit of a discussion. And I have some things I want to offer up. Imagine that. So thank you. So uh, Lori Beth, good morning. May I ask to start with you? Yep. Yes. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Hi. I'm Lori Beth. Thank you. I'm Bruce. We're all a little tired hey, this morning. Hey, it was a long day yesterday. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Buzz. Uh, my name is Lori Beth Jones. I live on the west side, west side, the forgotten cardinal direction of the city of Pittsburgh. So I'm happy to represent my side of the city as part of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission. Um, I really like it there. I think it's the best mm -hmm. kept secret in town. I would agree, yes, yeah. 
Um, so. Okay, good. All right, Amoye, good morning. Good morning. Welcome, it's nice to have you. Um, I reside in the um, Stanton Heights neighborhood. Um, I'm originally from Atlanta, so when I moved oh, here f- uh, about five years ago, I was uh, uh, I was in love with the city, but I also realized that there was an issue with litter, and so i um, slowly making my way into um, into the um, Clean Pittsburgh Commission. I feel like I would be able to make an impact and help really clean up something that I love so much. That's great. Uh, I have family in Atlanta. My brother moved in the big boom of the mid-80s, I guess it was, and he migrated and has been there probably 37 years now. I like Atlanta, but it's not Pittsburgh. It could never be Pittsburgh. It's it's really big, yeah. It's too big, and it's (laughs) too fast, and it's Mm -hmm. too unwalkable and uh, this idea of getting into a car to go to a drugstore and you know I'm a walker I want you know I want I want it wherever I need to be I need to mm-hmm. be on my feet not in a car you know yeah. so anyway so welcome so um Alicia good morning I asked you here even though you're not interviewed and you're already on the Clean Pittsburgh Commission I just thought you would add some importance to the conversation Thank and that so we much. should have you here so uh, a couple things that I'd like to talk about, if I may. Uh, unbeknownst to me, my, I was saying earlier, my mother kept a scrapbook of all this stuff I didn't realize she was keeping a scrapbook of. And I was ca- one your editorial in the Post-Gazette? It, everything. Everything. My mom is, uh, is going to sell her house and scale down, and so we're helping her clean things out. And I'm going through all this stuff that I d- didn't realize I even had. But one of them, if I... May, Madam Clerk, may I have that top, just the top one. I have my original appointment as a founding member of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission, appointed uh, by Tom Murphy on, um, what date, Two, uh, December 8th of 19, no, 2005, uh, was the founding of the Clean Pittsburgh Commission. And, uh, oh no, I'm sorry, October 18, 2005 is my official swearing in as a founding member. So um, I've thought a lot about, you know, kind of what has happened from 2005 to 2019. And as we went out campaigning the last four or five months now, it's a lot of it's boots on the ground and you're, you know, you're in the neighborhoods all the time, every day. And it was just that perfect time of year where winter's over, spring hadn't quite started, all the foliage is down, and everything is revealed for everyone to see. Um, And I mean, I knew it was bad, um, but I didn't realize that it had really gotten as bad as it had had gotten. I was really quite embarrassed by it, uh, that I wasn't more on top of it uh, and paying better attention to it. we saw tires were big, really big. We came across one uh, situation where there were a thousand tires stored on a property in a um, in a garage, which was clearly dilapidated, and uh, a match could have taken a block out without any any real effort at all. Um, plastic. It's unfathomable how we got to this this point in in our culture, where and I'm as guilty as the next person. You know, this single-use container plastic is simply everywhere, and the idea that somehow we don't share some kind of a collective responsibility to make sure that what we use meets its due end the way it's supposed to be. And that somehow just tossing it by the side of the road is somehow acceptable, and we should just live with it. And, and, and I, mean, I took hundreds of photographs because no one w- would believe what I was seeing while I was out there. And I was very tempted to make a slideshow and show them during this. And I thought, what would I ultimately accomplish? Right? That's that. That isn't. I'm not looking here to blame or embarrass or um, harm anyone in any way. What I'm hoping to do is to educate people into the fact that this is a crisis. This isn't, I don't accept the word litter. Um, it, I think it trivializes it. 
this this is garbage in the streets and government is formed and i apologize um, yeah, sorry and i don't know what i did with it i apologize um, governments are formed for very baseline reasons right pick up the garbage sweep the streets plow the snow you know those kinds of things um, and I don't mean to trivialize that by any means either. I mean, the, the importance of government, especially on a local level, cannot be overstated. But we're failing terribly um, in, um, in presenting um, our city as the jewel that it really is. And I believe we're doing a great disservice to many of our residents uh, by not fulfilling our just very simple baseline obligations to keep the streets clean and, uh, um, and, you know, and collecting the waste and those kinds of things. And part of that, I believe, is that we're just not requiring a higher standard. That people, I've always believed people will treat us the way we give per them permission to treat us, right? If I, if I ask, if I present uh, a front where I... Um, want people to treat me with respect and dignity, people are gonna treat me with respect and dignity. But if I allow people to walk all over me, they're gonna walk all over me. And I think our neighborhoods are no different at all. Neighborhoods that look like people don't care about them are treated as if no one cares about them. And so it becomes this vicious cycle of downward decline. Um, and it's very simple to throw out the broken window theory, but it's true, and I believe that, and that it does start with something as simple as just garbage in the streets. And before you know it, you know, we were seeing um, cars on residential streets, residential streets, cars, smashed windows, smashed bumpers, the tires are missing, the tires are laying in the street, the cars on blocks, and that wasn't an, an anomaly. It, we were seeing it with, with frightening regularity. Um, and so um, I'll get off my soapbox for a minute, but I, I, I really needed to stress the importance of the fact that I do believe this is a crisis, that this is dire, and we deserve better. Um, and the people that live here and that we represent here, they deserve better. And no one should have to live in a neighborhood that looks like nobody simply cares about them. So one of the reasons, Alicia, I asked you to come here is that you're very, you're passionate on the subject. You bring a lot to the conversation. I'm beyond happy that you are a part of this commission. Uh, we have talked uh, about um, uh, my desire to fund this commission um, and to introduce legislation that would fund the commission to help you to do the work that is so desperately needed. So I, I was just hoping that maybe you would just share some of your experience and, and what you hope our new members here will uh, uh, bring to the table and the passion they can um, assist uh, in you know <coughs> us getting these things accomplished. Mm -hmm. Well, if I may um, philosophize for just a moment, adding on your comments, uh, litter and garbage in the streets affects public health, it affects blood pressure, it affects feelings of hopelessness, ev everything that you said I uh, second. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so much like the volunteers on the Clean Pittsburgh Commission um, that are tasked with working with one another, whether that's nonprofits like Allegheny Cleanways, our Public Works Environmental Services representative, um, now our new West Side representative, Lori Beth. Um, the efforts that we are able to do while working together and making sure that we're not siloed um, have the potential to make meaningful impacts. Um, that being said, whenever we toured different parts of Knoxville together over the last few months, um, it, it was helpful to make direct asks from the Department of Public Works. Agreed. But, but we also asked them um, to define what they see their role is, whether that's reacting to 3 on one submissions or going out when they see things, having a policy where they, they don't accept when tires are dumped, they grab those immediately and don't wait for someone to report if they, if they do mm -hmm. report. Um, so, Again, the role of the commission is making sure that we're all working together, and we're also moving into more advocacy, right? Being volunteers, we can only really do so much. We can help empower community members to organize litter cleanups, or 
garbage in the street. I do like that very much. Um, and really enhance the way that we maintain our urban environment, right? Uh, none of this is, is going to go away. It'll get better, but we'll need to constantly maintain, clean up and maintain um, what well, ends and up I'm in the And I'm going to add one word to that, and that's to educate. It really yes. is. It's creating a standard. This, this is the bar. Mm -hmm. This is where it is, and this is where we expect to be. And we need, not only need, but we're going to demand that you are a part of it as well. I have, uh, you know, some of these other things I was going through, uh, I, I forget when it was, but it was before this, we organized uh, what I called a trash bash uh, in the South Side. Uh, and uh, we brought out 200 people. And it was really unusual for those kinds of things to happen. But we had tons of volunteers and people contributed food. And we had bands playing and kids activities. And 200 people went out. And I mean, we not only made an impact to say, look, our neighborhood deserves better and it needs to be clean. But it was this public awareness campaign that you, you're a part of this. We are, we collectively do this, right? And, and that you are as important a part as, of this as we is, we are. And it, it goes beyond us going out on our Saturday mornings and picking it up, right? Because mm -hmm. picking it up is this unwritten permission slip that it's okay. Don't worry about it. Toss it in the street. I'll come up and pick it up after you. Those days have got to end. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to go out and help and clean, but it ain't supposed to be there to begin with. We need to set that standard. Yeah, and uh, applying equal amounts of education and enforcement is something that we're advocating for. Of course, education takes money, and um, although we've looked into a number of ways of issuing, you know, statements on next door, which our community affairs office can help with, um, <coughs> there are a number of different ways that we can take advantage of free ways to get the word out that this isn't acceptable. But um, it's an it's an ongoing process. So I'm interested in your opinion on the role that business plays in that I believe that um, a business will uh, walk a commodity from, you know, inception to design to manufacturing uh, to selling. Um, and then once it's sold, it ends up in the street and business, I don't believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, doesn't feel a responsibility that somehow that package should then meet its due end. It somehow becomes uh, a responsibility of municipal government to make certain that that meets its due end, even though municipal government had nothing to do with the design, Im implementation, marketing, or sale of that product. But once we've made our money, it becomes your problem. And I, that's always bugged me. I, I think there, there's a, a higher role for business to play in this. I'm not sure what it is, but I'd love to know what your thoughts are. Right. Well, as you know, we're not able to regulate business, but we can make a number of different encouragements. And Amie can mention the codes that they are required to adhere by or adhere to. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, the 619 code that was recently um, passed um, or put forward by uh, Erica yeah. Strasberger's office, um, well, in conjunction with environmental services, we are stepping up um, like the business side of uh, how they would have to um, take responsibility for their waste and making sure that they do have recycling. And this, you know, it's um, kind of a step aside with uh, litter, but. Um, making sure that they have some accountability, having, making sure that they do take um, responsibility for the trash that they, they, they put out there. Um, yeah, so. One of the new, um, it's codified now, before yeah. it was just a policy, was that lids have to be on containers, and, mm -hmm. and now dumpsters need to be marked Labeled. with the name and address, mm -hmm. right. so that if it does come to enforcement, it's that much easier for the city to, to find out who is, who is violating that. Um, Number one growing business for, I think, the last 10 years in this uh, Allegheny County region is food and beverage, hands down. Mm -hmm. Every time you see a new business opening, it's food and beverage related in some way, shape, or form. But I don't believe that we've quite caught up with the demand of how one manages then a perishable waste, especially when the bulk of that takes place on Friday and Saturday nights and the hauling, uh, the waste management hauling companies don't pick up on Sundays. So you see many of our business districts with overflowing dumpsters of perishable product on a Sunday morning when there are people that either just want to go out for a walk, go out for a run, enjoy uh, coffee at the coffee shop, have breakfast, uh, and 
and the impact of Friday and Saturday night is obvious everywhere. And quite honestly, and I'm going to lean on you heavily for uh, ideas and, and recommendation about how we change code to say, if you're running a certain kind of food and beverage business that operates under this certain criteria, I don't care. Figure it out. But it's got to be gone Sunday and Saturday night. Because the businesses that operate Sunday morning have an absolute right to operate in a clean and well-respected environment. I think a lot of that is talking about um, considering how much they produce and having the appropriate uh, containers for, you know, making sure that everything is um, contained and not overflowing so that rodents can get into it. And um, we are uh, making an effort to uh, see where those... uh, those companies are failing in containing their waste and making recommendations on how they can improve and make sure that it is contained and not overflowing and in a mess when it does come to that Sunday morning, you know. And and part of something that environmental services has been working on is making those expectations very clear. Now that this is um, codified, very specific, we can clearly point to where in the code, where in the code this is required and uh, clearly point to what the violation amount could possibly be. Um, AMIA has been working on doing a business postcard mailer to what, 15,000 mm-hmm. different businesses in addition to reaching them in other ways. So we want to be very clear what the new standards are and then follow up to make sure that that is being followed. And then making certain that those a- actions are properly funded is the role of this council. And I guarantee you, when this budget season comes around again, we're going to have a clear ask for what it is that we need to to do the education platform or to add the additional enforcement officers uh, to be out and, and making certain that the legislation that this council recently passed is indeed respected and enforced and it's not about it's not about being punitive it's not about punishing anyone it's not about being anti anything Mm -hmm. it's again it is it's 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 setting a standard of respect that this this is the expectation and and no different than a parent and a child we we've set the standard and we expect that you're going to follow through with it and if not then there's consequence Mm -hmm. and clearly communicating that is the first well one of the first steps, for right. sure. When you had mentioned about um, new members joining, um, we are the commission is working on a, a more structured onboarding process so that we can share our strategic plan right away, make sure that new members know how they can be involved, um, know, you know specific ways we're going to ask them to participate, um, and really just enhance the, our ability to be more effective in those ways, too. Lori, Beth, and I had a really nice coffee meeting this morning before coming here, going over the different events that the the commission uh, is able to host, similar to the Trash Bash on the South Side, our annual Garbage Olympics, Mm -hmm. um, making the city of champions and uh, kind of capitalizing on that competitive nature to involve as many neighborhoods as possible to to clean up and take ownership of that. So. Um, yeah, and I think that um, again, I, I want to stress this is not about being punitive in any way. I think there are there are partnerships that can clearly be formed, and I think there are businesses that would be more than willing uh, to become partnerships with us. And I don't mean just small mom and pop, but thank God they would be. But I think really large packaging generating businesses would be more than happy to partner with us to find better ways to make certain that that plastic or paper ultimately reaches its due end. And and give me one more second, Councilman. I'm going to turn it over to you as well. Um, And uh, as as huge a a fan of recycling as what I am, I'm beyond rabid about my responsibility to recycle. I'm becoming more rabid about my responsibility to reduce. And it is is a, I think, probably the the biggest pillar of the conversation is um, how, how how do we fight packaging that unnecessary packaging that simply um, 
isn't necessary and we have to figure out what to do with it when it's done. There's a young woman, uh, and I think she's in New York, I, I believe I saw this on the, the Today Show, where her, her business is a package-free business. Did you, did you know, oh, I, yeah, I wish yeah. I could th speak better to it, can you? Yeah, it was I was, I'm very familiar with her. Uh, she's like, uh, all of her trash from the last six years is in one small mason jar. Um, but yeah, when, when residents do call our office, the Environmental Services Recycling Division, they're up in arms about the changes that are happening in recycling. I often point to the changes that we can make in our homes at, at the grocery store to reduce, to refuse, to, you know, to really, so you won't really in the end have to be upset about recycling because you've already changed and, and, and are beyond recycling, you know. Right, right. And I don't do anywhere near as good of a, of a job as I should be doing. And I, I, I find myself more and more holding myself accountable that, boy, in this moment, this is a real easy decision to make and it would make life easier, but what am I really doing long term? And, mm -hmm. you know, and if I'm going to advocate for these policy changes, then damn it, I better step up and, and put my money where my mouth is, right? Councilman, good morning. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for being here. You guys, for more questions from Bruce. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, no, I, this is a great commission. Um, we met maybe two weeks ago, so I know you're doing a lot of work. I heard you speak and introduce yourself when I was in the back. Um, this is a commission that uh, I was actually on when I was in the congressman's office. Um, this is one that's really important. As Council President Krause mentioned, funding it, I think, is the, is the next wave for all of us. So getting you guys the proper funding that you need. Um, we will be there um, Thursday night for the awards that, that you always honor different people, which I think is great um, because there are a lot of real Thursday. neighborhood champions that take the lead on this. And I think the city needs to be more and more supportive of them. So this is a great commission. Um, as Council President Kraus mentioned, you know, his involvement. And I think we all want to be very supportive and look at budget amendments um, or not even amendments, but just budget right. uh, allocations this fall to make sure. You just don't get one area you can focus on, but a number of communities. And mm -hmm. I just want to thank you for your willingness to serve. It's a really, really good board with a lot of great people on it. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councilman, do you wish to enter the conversation? Okay, I'm going to go further than that, <laughs> just for another minute or two. Um, the, um, the, the idea of... Um, of reclaiming uh, and reordering uh, and revitalizing, reinventing neighborhoods. And there's any number of neighborhoods that have clear potential uh, to um, uh, to uh, be contributory in nature, right? Um, uh, deserve that. And I think this is a, uh, it's foundational in, um, in presenting um, a, um, a, a positive uh, impression of what that neighborhood it is, who lives there, the people that are integral to the fabric of the neighborhood, um, how um, hard they work, uh, and how sometimes we fail to assist them in their efforts, and uh, and they deserve better. And I think um, it's it's no different than an, an artist and a, with a brush and a, a new and clean canvas. And if we can clean. Uh, the canvases of many of these neighborhoods and show them for really the the value they have and the integrity they bring to our um, our collective city of neighborhoods um, uh, then uh, we'll, we will have been doing our job right that's really what we're here to do so I want to take you guys around I, I'm, I'm going to organize a field trip and we're going to go take a ride. And Alicia and I did this uh, several times recently. She was immensely helpful to go out firsthand and see, oh my God, yeah, there are some things going on out here we have to. Uh, Director Gable and uh, Bill Crean uh, and the Department of Public Works has been immensely helpful. Um, I don't, and again, I, I want to stress this is not about criticizing or being punitive in any way or um, saying that we're not doing our job. We are doing our job. We just need to perhaps approach it from a different angle um, to, to see how we can do it better and perhaps even stop it before we actually have to go out there and, and pick it up. So we've made some, some pretty significant changes in Knoxville. We had a dump site up there that was um, abhorrent 
Um, and Bill came up and Director Gable came up and saw it and um, the leadership of Public Works came in and they cleared it out and we put some jersey barriers up and clear signage and a camera and guess what, there's nothing there. But it's because we set a standard to say you're not gonna do this anymore. This is not how we're, we're gonna uh, do it and, and we're not doing it. Um, the new trash regulations I think are gonna be immensely helpful. Uh, one of the problems I think that we see is that people, at least initially, are attempting to manage their waste, uh, putting it in a bag, uh, but uh, much of the pickup in, in a number of the hilltop neighborhoods uh, happens in back alleyways. People come flying through the alleyways, the bags get torn, the wind comes in, and everything blows everywhere. Um, and so the new regulations of it has to be in a can no matter what. Um, it has to have a lid on it. It has to be the size. And again, I'm not asking to go out there and slam people with citations. That's not what I'm talking about here. But educating people in, guess what? This is how it is. And we'll, we'll tell you once or twice, but then after that, there's got to be consequence for it. Just just to be clear, it, it is to be contained, but if it's set out for collection, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be in a container. Yeah. Say that again, because there are some people that are really are confused about yeah, that. Yeah, um, stored in a tidy sanitary fashion with a tight like fitting, fitting lid, lid yes. mm -hmm. except when it's put out okay. for collection in, in case someone is storing their stuff inside, you know, taking it right from their kitchen trash can to the curb. We didn't want to make it burdensome for people to purchase right. additional. Especially elderly or uh, handicapped in any way that mm -hmm. would make it difficult to yeah. do. And all but. of our, you know, as you know, our laws should reflect best practices, but really be thoughtful about what people are capable of and, you know, how they would interact with those. Right, and our responsibility to care for the planet, our environment, our city. We, we, it, there's a higher order to things. We have a responsibility, and, and, um, and it isn't to just throw it in the street and hope it goes away, right? Have you seen the videos on YouTube, the islands of plastic? Um, there, it, 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 an island of plastic the size of the state of Texas mm -hmm. is, yep. is floating in the Pacific Ocean. You think that's gonna get smaller anytime soon? It isn't. How the hell did that happen? It's, you know, and it will never decompose. It will sit there for all time until we spend astronomical sums of money that could be put to much better use to go out and pick it up, right? Okay. All right. So uh, I, I'm, I'm, for the moment, off my soapbox, but I, I thought it was really important to have this conversation. It's why I wanted to bring you in. Um, and again, I will, I promise you, I will pledge, I'll be much more active in the Clean Pittsburgh Commission uh, coming forward. The council will support you. Uh, I'll do everything to advocate the council to support you with the funding that's necessary to have you do the job that you do. Um, and let's go out and make the change that we all wanna see. Okay. Councilman, good morning, welcome. Good morning. Do you have some comment you'd like to you offer? Know, I, when I heard you were in here, I didn't realize you were gonna be here today at a late night, but. Uh, you know, Alicia, we did the walkthrough through the seldom seen, you know, and uh, that really went well. I, I think we're waiting on a bid or some sort or some sort of price, I okay. guess. Uh, am I off subject here? Are we, is, okay. No, yeah, so okay. Um, the councilman asked me to join even though I'm not being interviewed, but this is Ame Aquile. Hi, hi. She is um, the city's environmental services recycl recycling specialist good, good. and an oncoming member of the Clean Pittsburgh Welcome, uh, uh, Amia. Amia. Amia, nice, to, nice to meet you. Yeah. As well as, do you want to introduce yourself? I'm Lori Beth. I Hi, Lori Beth. I'm on the west side. I'm not, I'm a LA person, resident activist from Grafton Heights. Yeah, passionate about garbage? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I know Alicia and I share that, and uh, we have lots and lots of plastics that are laying alongside the road, and we take a great, I take a great deal of pride in cleaning it up, even if I do it myself, you know. It's really easy to do. Yeah. It's terrible that we have to do it, but um, so, you know, I'm in full okay, support thanks. of anybody cleaning up anything, so thanks. I'm sorry, I sidebarred for a moment. We're done. We're, we're good? Done. Yeah, we're good. We're good? Okay, so uh, we, we do have many people waiting to participate in the meeting. We're going to wrap this up, but again, I just thought it was important to have the conversation. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, I'm certain you'll, you'll be confirmed. It would be no problem. Alicia, will you, would, could you make sure um, to send the meetings uh, uh, dates and times to Brasha and Absolutely. ask her that they're on my calendar regularly? Yeah. And, and just a note, I guess, I hate to be a, the, the person yeah. at the table addressing the public, but on the pittsburghpa.gov, the city's website, all of our meeting times and most of our minutes and agendas are up as are up. well. So. Great. Okay, good. No. Number of ways to find out how to 
be involved. Yeah, are people, can people participate in some way uh, in all, the meeting or is it? All of our meetings are open are to the open. public. Mm -hmm. We recently switched, um, we alternate now between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. to allow for different schedules. Um, nice. Always open to the public, always open to discuss whatever. And they take place here? Um, the 10 a.m.s are at, the, at Conservation Consultants, Inc. on South 14th on over CCI. in the south side. Mm -hmm. Um, and right now, since Homewood has been our neighborhood of focus, we're doing the 6 p.m. meetings at different locations in Homewood, the library, CCAC. Oh, that's yeah. perfect. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Really, sincerely, thank you very much. Um, just uh, This was just a way to introduce the conversation, but um, uh, you know, as of yesterday, it appears a couple of us might have a few more years to hang around here, and uh, I want to make this a passion of mine. I just, you know, I want to... I want to go out with a bang saying, you know what, look at that. You know what, we changed some culture around here. You know? Okay. Thank All you right. both no, for No, thank support. you very much. Appreciate having you here this morning, okay? Should we just hang for a few minutes to see if we get a um, quorum, or should I recess and, uh, should I recess? Okay. Can we start public comment? All right, so I'm... That's good. I am going to call for a brief recess. When members are, are uh, in attendance, then we'll call the meeting to order. Okay? Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to Pittsburgh City Council Standing Committee meeting of Wednesday, May 22nd, 2019. Our first order of business is public comment. Members of the public who want to address City Council, please come forward. You'll be giving three minutes. The green light means the time has begun. Begin with your name and either address or location. The yellow light means you have one minute to summarize. The red light means your time has expired. Please relinquish the podium. I would like to remind everyone that the rules of council state that common is limited to matters of concern, official actions, or deliberation, which are or may be before council. Profanity will, be, will not be permitted, and order will be maintained at all times. First speaker, please. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shad Henderson. I'm here represent, representing my role as the Director of Equity and Community Partnerships at Neighborhood Allies and as a member of the All in Pittsburgh Equitable Development Collaborative. I'm here to show our strong support for the equity legislation that's in front of council today, uh, including the resolution declaring Pittsburgh an all-in city, the ordinance setting equity standards and requirements for all departments and units of city government, the establishment of the City of Pittsburgh Equity and Inclusion Implementation Team. I would like to acknowledge and show appreciation for the leadership of Councilman Burgess, Councilman Lavelle, for championing this legislation and for uplifting the recommendations from the Equitable Development Report that was released in 2016, calling for Pittsburgh businesses and institutions to begin to embed racial equity within their operations and decision making. I also want to recognize the leadership of Mayor Bill Peduto and his administration for the recent establishment of the Equity Office and for already forming a partnership with GARE, the Government Alliance on Race and Equity that will provide the technical assistance needed to embed racial equity within city government. The legislation in tandem with the Mayor's Office sends a strong signal across our city, region, and country that Pittsburgh is serious about equitable development. We are now laying the critical infrastructure that is needed to drive and sustain equity in Pittsburgh. I also want to emphasize that the burden is not on city government alone to achieve equitable development results in Pittsburgh. It's going to take the contribution of residents, philanthropy, private industry, the nonprofit sector, and others to accomplish our goals. And All in Pittsburgh is here to support your efforts and that of the greater community. Together, we will eliminate the pervasive sense that there are two Pittsburghs, one that is growing more prosperous and the other cut off from opportunity by poverty, structural racism, and discrimination. According to the 2018 Pittsburgh Equity Indicators Report, we have shown measurable improvements in regards to public safety, infrastructure, quality, investment, and civic engagement, but we are trending in the wrong direction in regards to health outcomes, household income, uh, health outcomes, and poverty. Just to focus on the economic indicator for a moment, 
The report shows household incomes amongst black residents decreased from 27,000 in 2016 to 22,000 uh, in 2017, while white incomes increased for whites from 54,000 to 56,000. It's a moral and an economic imperative that we uh, begin to work together to eliminate the disparities uh, in our community. So I just wanted to thank council for your leadership for uh, addressing this issue and knowing that this is a community-wide strategy and all in Pittsburgh is here in support of your work and happy to work with you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Yvette Mangalo. I'm here um, on behalf of All in Pittsburgh and also as a professional working um, on equity issues in this field and just as a parent who wants a better Pittsburgh for my girls. Um, so uh, I'd like to also thank the black elected officials, including Councilman Burgess and Councilman Lavelle for working with us on this legislation. Um, just reiterating some of Shad's point, I think it makes, uh, it draws a line in the sand that Pittsburgh is serious about advancing equity and about dealing with the racial disparities that have been present for so long. And I think this is really just the first step in dealing with those disparities and um, helping us break some new ground, both in the public and private sector. Um, so I, I think um, this legislation is gonna be critical to ensuring accountability within government. Um, we recognize we need to do it in every space in Pittsburgh, but it's great that um, the city can take a lead on this and set those parameters from the get-go. So um, I think it's critical that the city be a model of this behavior and hopefully we'll set a precedent um, for other cities that are dealing with these issues also. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Next speaker. My name is Yvonne F. Brown. I live in the Hill District. Uh, I, you, do you see this shirt? When I went to vote at Kaylee Irvis, I had this shirt on. I had a hoodie because it was cold. She said to me, you cannot vote not unless you cover it up. I said, what? She said, you can't. I had to zip it up. I zipped it up, and I knew she was wrong. I told, she, told her she was wrong. But see, where I live at, any time I ask a question, it's the automatic they were whispering, here she go with her SHIT. But I went to the manager, I said, you are the manager of this building. First I went to Victory, I know he works with the polls. He goes in the evening, but anyway, he gave me the number. <laughs> I went to the manager, I said, you're the manager, please call them and tell them they need somebody to come up here and explain to the people. And he called, first one lady didn't know, she was the one, we got the big supervisor, she said she ain't never heard of such. Do you understand that all those people that worked here, they all believe that I could not, or anybody else could not come if they had like his name or somebody's name. You understand, look, let me tell you something. My father used to say, we got all this black people, got all the superstitions, and the white people got the books that we won't read. Because he used to say, my father used to say, free school and dumb niggas. And he meant niggas is ignorant people. You could be a white nigga, you could be a black nigga. A nigga is an ignorant person. And that's what they're <clears throat> trying to make us. Now, there was no notice that we were having a meeting this morning. But I want you to understand, you coming down there and bragging on them. They're supposed to start 10 o'clock in the morning. And they start 10.25. But on, when they want to take and do something that the people don't know, they start at 9. How can they make it at 9 o'clock in the morning and can't come at 10? Why can you do it? Because you know what? You're covering up. You were had a paper to impeach him. Did you hear it? No. The news the paper man was in here. He, this is a paper, paper that started. He's getting ready to get him impeached. We're trying to. Because you, you didn't see one side. I'm here 20 something years. And I can't find out when the meetings are. I can't. And then when I go to vote, I'm told I can't vote because I have on the shirt. You have made sure that you have two cities. You're sitting here talking about one city is two. 
Anytime they have something for August Wilson and we take our babies up there and to paint the faces five dollars for a half a face, ten for a whole face. I used to do face painting. One jar is three dollars. A dollar. When Miss Rudiak, the white woman, had her thing, free face, face painting, free food. In our area, cupcake was five dollars for the black children. Five dollars. August Wilson would turn over in his Next speaker, please. Bismillah. <clears throat> Petition calling for a live televised public hearing and press conference on an Im immediate impeachment petition and ethics board complaint for subject and defendant city councilman Ricky V. Burgess pursuant to the City of Pittsburgh Home Rule Charter, Article 3, Section 320, and Article 8, Sections 801, 806, and 807 for mental incapacity, incompetency, neglect of duty, malfeasance, mismanagement of office and public funds, and for many other corrupt acts and or practices, as well as the total neglect of the, of the community and economic development of the District 9 communities for over the past decade at least. This petition also calls for charges to be filed on behalf of city residents against defendant Ricky V. Burgess for gross negligence and violations of the Pennsylvania Public Official and Employee Ethics Act, Ethics Act Sections 1101.1, Subsection A, 1103, Subsections A, B, C, F, Contracts, 1104, Subsections A, 1105, Subsections A, 1109 subsection A. This petition also calls for the filing of civil charges against the defendant pursuant to subsection 1110 subsection B, probable cause, and subsection D, damages seeking declaratory, punitive, and emotional distress, pecuniary loss, and relief for other damages. This petition also calls for a complaint to be filed on behalf of the District 9 city residents against defendant Ricky V. Burgess for gross negligence and violations of the City of Pittsburgh Code of Conduct, Chapter 197, 197.03, 197.04, 197.05, 197.07, 197.07, subsections F, subsections G, and 197.08, subsections A, B, and C. We, the undersigned, are concerned citizens who urge our, our leaders to act now on our petition requesting a public hearing. We, the qualified electors who reside in the city of Pittsburgh, request the city council to conduct a public hearing relative to the above mentioned petition for impeachment. We, the undersigned, acting as qualified electors who reside in the city of Pittsburgh, are submitting this petition demanding the immediate impeachment and removal from office city councilman Ricky V. Burgess for total and complete incompetency, neglect of duty, criminal malfeasance, mismanagement of office, and for many other corrupt acts and or practices. This is an impeachment petition being submitted by we, the qualified electors, pursuant to the Home Rule Charter of the City of Pittsburgh, Article 3, Section 320, which states that <coughs> Council shall grant a public hearing to residents of the city on any matter if they deliver a petition requesting a public hearing to the city clerk, provided, providing a delivery petition meeting all of the requirements to the city clerk. This is exactly what we have here, a signed petition with 25 and 20 signatures ready to be submitted. We would like to talk with our city council after today's meeting to discuss this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Next speaker, please. Any other speakers? Seeing no other speakers, we'll go to the agenda part. Oh, talk, Tim? We're here to listen. Tim, uh, Tim Stevens, chairman of BPAP Black Political Empowerment Project and facilitator of Corporate Equity Inclusion Roundtable. And we're here under that hat today. And uh, we support the idea that has been brought forth by Councilman Burgess and Councilman Lavelle. The equity piece is something we've been working on with our seventh conference coming up on June 17th. And we strongly support the efforts that have been proposed we want to be a city of equity. We want to be a champion of equity. We want to have a city that other people look forward to and to. 
in terms of what needs to be done in terms of equity. So we're looking forward to the conversation today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Tim. Is there any other speakers? Seeing no other speakers, we will now go to the roll call. We ask that the clerk call the roll. President Krause, Here. Mr. Lavelle, Mr. O'Connor, Mrs. Uh, Kel Smith, and Reverend Burgess. Here. Six members present. Thank you very much. That takes us to the first committee of the day, which is Finance and Law, of which I am the chair. We have a deferred paper. Bill 1338. Ordinance amending and supplementing and correcting the Pittsburgh Code at Title II, Fiscal Article I, Administrative Chapter 219, Operating Budget, so as to add contract and bid information requirements to fiscal impact statements and to further correct numbering and formatting. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. 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 Ms. Harris? Chair. Do you want to say something first at your committee? No. Okay. It's your bill. Um, I have nothing right now to say. Uh, I'm ready to pass it. There's a motion to approve on the table. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposers, nay. Next bill, please. Bill 1662. Resolution further amending resolution number 73 by transferring $1,600 from Neighborhood Learning Alliance Public Safety Cameras to D2 Deke Hockey. Total of all projects is not to exceed $14,964.53. Be the next bill with it, please. Okay. Bill number 1663, resolution further amending and supplementing resolution number 855 by transferring $1,600 from Neighborhood Learning Alliance Public Safety Cameras to D2 Deck Hockey in Council District 2 Neighborhood Needs Program. Need a motion. Motion. Motion, yeah. motion to approve. Second. Need a second. Any conversation, no conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. You can read the next three bills together, please. Bill 1669, resolution establishing the City of Pittsburgh Equity and Inclusion Implementation Team. Bill number 1670, ordinance supplementing the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances, Title I, Administrative Article Three, Organizations, by adding a new subsection, 11103, Equity Standards and Requirements for All Departments and Units of City Government. Bill number 1671, resolution declaring the City of Pittsburgh as an all-in city. Need a motion, Mr. Lavelle. Motion to approve. Need a second. 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 Mr. Lavelle. Thank you. Um, well, first and foremost, I want to thank everyone from All In Pittsburgh um, for their work on this, Neighborhood Allies, as well as Reverend Burgess for sort of being the liaison to move a lot of this forward. These three bills, um, so one of the bills declares the city of Pittsburgh as an All In city, which essentially means, sorry, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. All right. So these three bills do a number of things. One, it declares the city of Pittsburgh as an all-in city, which essentially means we're gonna do all we can to break down racial barriers. Um, the second bill would actually require all city departments to create equity and diversity goals within the department that then would be reported to council on a yearly basis that we could also then tie their budgets to. And then the third one is actually to create an implementation body that will help implement these goals and also be accountable for tracking the equity and inclusion goals of the city. And enforcing them. Um, anyone else? Yeah, may I please? Mr. Cross? May I please be added as a sponsor to the bills? So noted. Thank you yeah. very much. Uh, Ms. Harris. Add me. Okay. Add, and Mr. Connor and Ms. Please Harris you. and Mr. Coghill. And I just want to say I want to thank everyone for their participation. We also want to thank the mayor's office. This is the um, beginning of, of even more hard work, but the mm -hmm. end of probably. Uh, nine months of work, and I want to thank all the partners, the mayor's office, uh, the All-In Coalition, uh, Councilman uh, Lavelle, um, the black elected officials, uh, the consultants, everybody who I think uh, played a part to bring this now to uh, close to the finish line. We have a motion to approve on the table. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers and nay. Thank you very much. Uh, it takes us to the invoice. The invoices are on the table. We need a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. Any Second. questions about the invoices? No question about the invoices. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers, nay. There are no interdepartment transfers. There are P cards. P cards are on the table. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. second. Any questions about the P cards? 
Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, there's nay. Takes us to Public Works Committee. Ms. Kel Smith is the chair. We have a new paper. Bill 1655. Resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into a donation agreement with the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy to accept a donation for materials to repair and improve the nine mile run trail in Frick Park and further authorizing the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement with the Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy accepting the donations for this purpose. Need a motion. Motion, motion to approve. approve. Need a second. second. All those in any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers nay. Next bill, please. Bill 1656. Resolution authorizing the mayor and the director of the Department of Public Works to enter into an agreement or the use of existing agreement between the City of Pittsburgh and Pashik plus MTR for the professional landscape architectural services for Arsenal Park Phase 1 design at a cost not to exceed $394,174. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any conversation? No conversation. <laughs> Any other conversation? No conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed is nay. Next bill, please. Bill 1661, resolution authorizing the mayor and director of the Department of Mobility and Infrastructure on behalf of the city to enter into an agreement with the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation to receive certain grant monies for the Safe Routes to School <coughs> project through the Transportation Set-Aside Program and further authorizing an agreement to expend these grant monies toward completion of the Safe Routes to School project. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor, since five by saying aye. Aye. Opposes nay. It takes us to the next committee of the day, which is Human Resources Committee. Ms. Harris is the chair. We have a new paper. Bill 1657, resolution providing for the filing of applications by the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Human Services for grants in connection with the Joint Job Initiative Program Employment Advancement and Retention Network and providing for the authorization to enter into agreements with various agencies and to pay for expenditures for costs to support, implement, and administer the program, costs not to exceed. Four million five hundred eighty-five thousand seven hundred and eighty-six dollars. Need a motion, Ms. Harris. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second, Ms. Harris. It speaks for itself. Does anyone have any questions? <coughs> no questions. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Thank, Thank you very you. much for coming. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed your presence. Thank you. All Good right, morning. that takes us to Land Use and Economic Development Committee, uh, which Ms. Gross is the chair. We have a deferred paper. Bill 1599, resolution providing for the designation as a historic structure and under Title 11 of the Code of Ordinances that certain structure known as the South Side Presbyterian Church located at 1926 Sarah Street in the South Side <coughs> neighborhood, 17th Ward of the city. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? Uh, very brief, just very, very briefly. We did host the public hearing. Um, there is uh, no opposition at all. Uh, there is uh, clear support from uh, the governing body of the Presbyterian Church, um, and I am happy to uh, move this forward and ask the support of the members to do so as well. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, there's nay. That brings us to a new paper. Bill 1668. Ordinance supplement in the Pittsburgh Code of Ordinances, Title IX, Zone in Chapter 922, Development Review Procedures with a new subsection, Affordable Housing Impact Statements. I need a motion to hold and refer to the Planning Commission. Whose committee? For a recommendation, re referral and recommendation. Yep. Pittsburgh Planning Commission. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers nay. Takes us to the last committee of the day of a fast moving meeting. Intergovernmental Affairs Committee, Mr. Connors, the chair. Bill 1621. Resolution authorizing the mayor, the Office of Management and Budget, and the Department of Public Works to enter into a professional service agreement with Oxford Development Company to serve as property manager for 412 Boulevard of the Allies. In motion, Mr. Corner. Motion to approve. Need second. a second. Any conversation? Uh, yes. Um, I believe Councilwoman Gross um, last week had some information. She wants to just give a brief comment on it. Again, I think most of us don't like this building um, but we understand that we have to move forward with it and Oxford Development is a local company that 
will be able to uh, manage this building for us, hopefully, and maybe bring in some additional revenue since we're spending uh, $60 million on uh, what four of us believe is not the right idea. But now that we're entering this road, I think Oxford is a good company that will serve us well. So I, I'll pass off to Councilwoman Gross. Gross. Yeah, I think Councilman O'Connor said it fairly well. We had some questions in a briefing and we're appreciative of the Housing Authority, the URA, and our um, own administration for coming in and, and answering a lot of questions. When we were facing the decision to purchase um, 412 Brittle Boulevard, the Allies, um, we had testimony at the table that the uh, 200 Ross Street had been governed by a tri-party cooperative agreement between the URA, the Housing Authority, and the City of Pittsburgh, and it had gone badly, and the 200 Ross Street had been managed badly um, and was so run down that it, it, could, it was uh, too expensive to refurnish it or rehabilitate it. So um, that we, you know, council chose to, to allocate $40 million, which is only the purchase price, and there's still build-out costs and um, finishing costs to Boulevard the Allies. Um, and so it will be a $60 million project and that it will be governed by the same cooperative structure and also um, have an uh, outsourced management company. And so the concern would be that this $60 million purchase would also be managed badly. Um, and so it was helpful to have that briefing and to see some of the documents. We did get the RFP. We did not get the proposals by um, the management companies, um, and we didn't get the new cooperative agreement. So I'm gonna abstain today. I do appreciate the fact that the, the um, different governing bodies are willing to, to have this conversation. I think it's an important one, because this now is a public asset, and it is the responsibility of this body to be sure that it is managed uh, well for the taxpayer. Thank you. Um. Ms. Harris, yes. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> I have nothing against the Oxford Company, actually. Uh, I think they do good work. But uh, uh, being one of those four members, uh, this just, I think, was ridiculous uh, to spend this kind of money, especially because of all the money that has been spent on 200 Ross Street. Uh, with renovations uh, from 9 through 13, 13 floors also, uh, seventh floor and four and three. Uh, there was no flooding in the elevator. There's no mildew smell at all. Uh, <laughs> there was uh, just a big plastic bag back there where all the papers have been dumped that have not been put into the computer system, which would probably save a lot of money for this city also. Uh, we were already up to $100 million in bond money, which uh, I did a right to know on, and still haven't gotten the right answers back on what we spent the first $100 million on, which should last, as far as the bond goes, this was another $40 million. Uh, and then we have... 60 million uh, and God knows what uh, and uh, yes maybe there has been some things but with all the money that has gone into 200 Ross Street I even understand they got a new boiler down there uh, the building is only 17 years younger than uh, this building that we sit in right now and yes, we use air conditioners in each of our rooms. Are we going to get rid of the city county building? Because, you know, we have the same thing. It's basically over in uh, 200 Ross Street. And uh, the cost for this uh, is unbelievable. I think that should have been done on 200 Ross Street. They even started... Uh, what do you call it when you do the bricks? They p were pointing the bricks on the building. So it doesn't make any sense. I'll be curious to see who picks up 200 Ross Street and for what. Um, 
It's unbelievable. I'm not going to vote no on Oxford. I'm voting no on that building. I voted no uh, at the beginning, and I'm still voting no. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cargill. Um, yes, I, I think I can speak on behalf of the five wise council people who decided to go ahead with the purchase of that property because uh, this for me was, this is brick and mortar. This is a real estate purchase. I, you know, the space that they were in was deplorable. Um, this building is purely more grand and more expensive building, I think. And we, we could probably sell that building today and not lose a dime. And we'll always have it. And as providing we manage it right, which I agree with, you know, the others as far as managing that property is going to be very important. Um, so, and at 200 Ross Street, if we have, uh, if it's up to code, let's sell the thing, tear it down, do something with it because it's a dump, uh, you know. But, but this new facility, I'm hoping that the departments are going to operate more efficiently out of as well. But, but we'll see about that. That has yet to be seen. Um, but I did have some reservations about hiring this Oxford. I, I didn't anticipate these costs because I did figure that the city had the resources to manage the building. With three different departments in there, maybe it complicates things. Um, and, you know, I guess I wasn't thinking about managing a, you know, a nine-story building. But, but if it's just a matter of that person calling people, calling the person to fix the air conditioning and the heater. So I had some questions about that. So I'm happy to uh, talk about that. But I stand behind the uh, purchase of the building. I think it will be a good thing for generations to come. Thanks. Thank you very much. Any other conversation? No other conversation. All those in favor, perhaps we should do a roll call vote. Mr. Carkill. Aye. Mrs. Gross? Same. Mrs. Harris? No. President Krause? Aye. Mr. LaBelle? Aye. Mr. O'Connor? Staying. Reverend Burgess? Aye. Four ayes, one no, and three, two abstentions. Positive recommendation. Thank Positive. you very much. That takes us to um, a new paper. Um, we're starting to Mr. O'Connor's uh, committee. Bill 1658, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh official sewer facilities plan for DeFleur Investments LLC for 700 Armandale Street in the 25th Ward. Need a motion, Mr. Connor? A motion to approve. Need a second? Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers nay. Next bill, please. Bill 1659, resolution adopting plan revision to the City of Pittsburgh official sewer facilities plan for connection at Southside 2984 Sydney Street, identified in the 16th Ward. Need a motion. Motion to approve. Need a second. Second. Any conversation? No conversation. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposers nay. Positive recommendation. Uh, that exhausts our agenda that takes us to motions and resolutions members of the of council who want to suggest well, let me begin with um, the announcements this afternoon council will meet for a briefing relative to 2019 housing opportunity fund allocation plan sessions will begin at 1 30 and 2 15. next wednesday may 29th at 9 30 a.m council will hold interviews for three more employees to the clean pittsburgh commission also, a reminder that the council and clerk offices will be closed on Monday, May 27th, in observance of Memorial Day. Members. Anyone have? I, I do want to suggest, um, first of all, I want to certainly um, thank all of the people who came out to vote on yesterday to exercise their um, privilege um, of voting. Um, second of all, I want to um, publicly thank uh, Councilwoman Darlene Harris for her long service to our, to our council. Mm -hmm. uh, she has been my friend. Um, we have been, um, we have a, a, a complicated relationship, her and I, right? Um, and that we are really close friends and like two old married people, I think sometimes we fuss at each other, but we are, it is underneath that certainly is respect and love and uh, affection. And so I just want to publicly thank her for her long tenure um, and her, um, she is the longest serving member of council 
and um, um, and want to just thank her for her hard work. She was the she is the hardest working member of council, and I want to thank you for your insight, your concern, and affection for me, and what you've meant for your district and for this city. Last but not least, um, I will say. Um, it's always clear to me that there is pain in the district that I represent. Um, and that that pain is sometimes reflected publicly. And so um, I pray and hope that there is healing, um, that those people who um, um, are in pain and, 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 and because of their personal pain um, have a need to, to hurt others will um, 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 have the opportunity um, to become whole, and um, the God I serve is still in the healing business. And so with that, um, is there um, um, any, I need a motion to excuse the absent members, approve the minutes, and adjourn the meeting? So moved. Is there a second? Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Foes is nay. We are adjourned. Aye.